This is a short introduction in how to use uh, FreeFEM to solve uh, heat transfer conduction problems. So the main idea it is that we are going to solve uh, the partial differential equation defined uh, by the heat. And this is uh, given by minus k nabla square t equal to q dot, where t it is the temperature and um, Q, it is uh, the heat transfer um, heat source. And so our problem is defined in over a domain omega that represent any object and uh, all divided in three boundary. Not because there are only three, but there are three different types of boundary conditions. So gamma one, gamma two, and gamma three. So this boundary condition could be either temperature, heat flux, or convection, which is a mixture of heat flux and temperature known. So the temperature boundary condition, it is telling us that over this boundary, gamma 1, so we know the temperature, if the temperature is known. The heat flux, it is telling us that um, over the gamma 2, we know the heat flux that could be a known value or just zero. Zero is a known value in the case that is uh, an insulation. Uh, finally, convection. It is telling us that all the heat coming from conduction, it is going to the fluid uh, via convection, and the temperature of the fluid it is t infinity, and t actually will represent the temperature on the boundary. Okay, so for free FEM, free FEM cannot solve in a strong form the equation like this. So we have to transform it into the weak form. We do it with the help of a couple of things. We do it with the help of an auxiliary function V. So V is an auxiliary function, which is the same time of function as the temperature. And uh, to get this form, you use uh, the Gauss theorem. Uh, the divergent theorem and we get this um, equation which is a first order equation but it is divided in two as an integral equation the first term it is k multiplied by the gradient of the temperature dot product the gradient of the auxiliary equation v minus an integral term and the interesting thing of the integral term it is this part and this part actually corresponds um, to the heat flux when we combine the gradient of the temperature dot n with k it is going to be the heat flux so the heat flux multiplied by v that's defined on the boundary and this should be equal to the integral of the heat source multiplied by v our auxiliary equation so if we write this in expanded form for 2D, for 2D we are going to have, so the first term, the integral over the domain, it is equal to k multiplied by dx t dx v, where dx represents the partial derivative of the velocity, or the, sorry, of uh, v over, uh, with respect to x, and in this case the partial derivative of the temperature with respect to x, and plus dy dt dy dv the same here dy represents the partial derivative so this integral is defined over omega so the second term the terms in the boundary can be expanded as k multiplied by v and multiply by this is the gradient dot uh, the normal vector so normal vector is defined like the external normal to the surface <clears throat> okay, and the right hand side of the equation it is moved to the left hand side. So for convenience in FreeFEM it's going to be defined um, everything equal to zero. So we have to put everything on the left hand side. So next um, it is um, um, we need to define a very particular problem. So I'm going to load uh, the second slide.
So this is going to be a very particular problem in which we have a um, rectangular domain and we have divided in four boundaries, one, two, three, and four. So we are going to insulate the left and the right hand side. Uh, the temperature at the bottom is 20 C and the temperature on the top it is 30 C. Um, the uh, conductivity it is going to be 50 and it's going to be constant over the whole domain and um, but it could be actually not constant but in this case it's going to be constant and also uh, the heat source is going to be zero in this case so the first thing we need to do is the definition of the domain so the domain is going to be a square so in free frame we have to define a mesh of a 2 times 4 square so that's what we're going to do and we are going to call that th so let's have a look to the code so the actual code the first line it is mesh so we have one word mesh is an identifier and th it is going to be the name of the variable and uh, we are defining like a square of 2 times 4 this is the way of defining um, a square mesh in free frame so we just put x multiplied by 2 and y multiplied by 4 and the first two parameters are the mesh density it's going to be a 10 by 10 uh, mesh elements um, okay next we need to define the space of solution so the space of solution is um, is defined as a um, finite element space which consists of a finite element type which could be linear quadratic or any other type which is associated to the mesh so th for us is represent the mesh and P1, P2 is, is going to represent the finite element space. So we're going to call that um, finite element space VH. So if we go back to the code, so finite element space, if E space, it is VH that we get that name, and it is. Um, the join of the mesh plus the finite element type. So now we need to define some variables. So definition of field variables. So the variables that are defined over any point. So the temperature in our in our case, the temperature, it is going to be a function of x and y. So it's a field so the same thing it is V our auxiliary equation and it will be K because K there is the conductivity the conductivity it is defined at each point so we need to tell freefem that these variables are actually defined on the domain so the way of doing it in freefem it is VH which is our finite element space and then follow the of the variables in this case i particularly said that k it is going to be equal to 56 i'm just saying straight away that it's going to be constant but the fact that it's constant doesn't mean that it's just a real uh, number it is a field variable so it is defined over all the whole um, domain okay finally we get to define the equation in the weak form so the equation in the weak form as we defined in the last slide it is the integral over the domain of these um, uh, terms so we just have to transcribe that so we have to be careful in free to define what is the domain and what type of domain do we have because we have 2d domain so we have to put and our domain is going to be th 
and uh, we have to add the terms in the boundary so we shall simplify here like v multiply q q flux because it actually it is equal to minus k multiplied by the gradient of t dot n so this is going to be the heat flux and the uh, last term is the source term which in our case is going to be equal to zero so what i'm telling free fm it is it is the integral the 2d integral over this domain which is th and uh, i'm just transcribing what i wrote k multiplied by dx t dx v plus dy t dy v and then we have the two integrals over the um, surface in this case on the surface the heat it is going to be zero in surface two and four because they are insulated plus the way of telling free fem that we have a temperature boundary condition it is with uh, the command on so on surface one the temperature it is equal to 30 plus on surface 3 the temperature is going to be equal to 30 and uh, the final term it is our here uh, heat source which it is zero but have, we have to write v times zero because it's in the weak form, weak form. so that's it so that's with that we can already solve the problem here this is the command to plot the temperature and fill in the value so I'm going to run it command B so here we have the temperature on the top it is um, 30 and in the bottom it is uh, 20 so the 3d version it will have very nice uh, linear um, field uh, distribution of the temperature okay last thing that we need to do it is to compute the actual heat transfer through all the boundaries that we have okay so I'm going to jump to slide 3 So we have three boundaries that are very well defined, like one, two, three, four. Uh, the common square in uh, in FreeFem actually identify these uh, four segments. So uh, the heat transfer in uh, each uh, boundary it is defined by the this, which is the Fourier um, law. So this minus k, the gradient of the temperature dot n, mm, and the integral over the boundary, it is going to give us um, the heat flux, uh, sorry, the heat transfer rate. So this is the heat flux, and the integral is going to give us the heat transfer rate. So in expanded notation, so this is going to be equal, so q sub i, equal to minus the integral of k multiplied by the x t n x where n x it is uh, the normal to the surface plus dy t n y good news is that free fame already have some global variables which are the um, the normal to the surface so we don't have to worry about the normal to the surface so free fame already has it defined so if we jump to our uh, freeframe code so first of all the heat transfer rate over a surface it is just one number it is one value so that's why it is a real number and in freeframe any variable that we want to use has to be defined so if we don't do it it will give us a message and um, frustration will come out because we don't know what is the error coming from so we have to define 
the uh, variables q1, q2, q3, and q4, which are going to be the heat transfer rate in each one of the surfaces. So q1, it is the integral, 1D integral, because this is our, a 2D problem, so it is an integral over this line of our domain, which is th, and on segment or boundary 1. So this is boundary 1. And here we have the definition of uh, the Fourier's law, k multiplied by dt, uh, dx dt, sorry, uh, multiplied by n of x, so the normal in dx direction, plus nyt, the partial derivative of the temperature with respect to y, multiplied by ny, so the normal in the y direction, which is already fine, so we just have to say it so the only difference in between one two three and four it is that we are integrating over a different boundary so in this case one two three four all of the same domain but the definition is the same so we don't have to change anything so finally what i'm doing here it is i am uh, printing the values in the standard output so it's going to appear in this uh, window so the heat transfer rate, so see everything that I write here, it is going to uh, be in the C out, which is the window. So I'm basically, I'm right, and this is, these are the variables, Q1, Q2, Q3, and Q4. And finally, the total heat transfer rate, which is the sum of all of them. So by conservation, first law of thermodynamics, conservation of uh, energy, we should have this equal to zero. Another thing, these two boundaries were insulated, so Q2 and Q4 must be equal to zero. So let's see how it is re the result. So I'm going to run it. So it ran. So here we have heat transfer rate. So this is what is printing. 280, this is in one in two one is sorry one is this one 280 in two it is 6.3 10 to the minus 13 so that's almost zero and um, on the top it is minus 280 so meaning that the heat is coming down and uh, on the left we have minus 3.18 10 to the minus 12 so it is almost zero and the total heat transfer rate it is about zero 10 to the minus 11. so i hope this uh, uh, very small tutorial helps to understand how freefem works for heat transfer problems thank you